line between being alive and dead. Viruses SARS-CoV-2 The COVID-19 virus In this video, we are not discussing about how many people die in a year due to various infections like SARS-CoV-2. If you want to know more about that, you can watch previous video and also the coming videos on COVID-19. This video is about viruses like SARS-CoV-2. Are they really alive or not? If you didn't get the question, we can put it in another way. Are viruses alive or dead? Or we can put it in yet another way. Is coronavirus, the SARS-CoV-2, the COVID-19 virus, a living organism or a non-living thing? This question arises due to many articles and reports that are going around saying that SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19, is not a living thing. Some people think that these are all rumors and fake news and that is the only explanation for such forwards. If that is what few of you are thinking, you too are wrong. To know how come so, keep watching this video. Well, as many people with scientific temperament had expected, there is lot of fake news going around. For example, see this article claiming that COVID-19 is not due to virus infection but 5G radiation along with many more far-fetched claims. What do you all think about this? Most of you who are thinking what the hell is this nonsense are thinking in right direction and few people who are convinced now after reading such articles about how COVID-19 is not a viral infection should know that this publisher like many others has copy pasted this in October from a fake WhatsApp forward which went around during April. Similarly, in many places all around the world, people due to lack of scientific temperament along with political and religious bias are getting fooled and endangering people's lives, including their own. So, does this explanation make the viruses like SARS-CoV-2 virus alive? Then according to some experts, yes. And according to others, still the answer is no. Why this confusion among doctors and scientists? Why are they not able to tell whether viruses, including coronavirus, is alive or not? There are currently 6591 discovered and catalogued viruses in master chart of ICTV, the International Committee on Taxonomy of Viruses. And as estimated by experts, as many as hundreds of millions more still unknown and yet to be discovered. So we have barely scratched the surface and all of these viruses discovered and yet to be discovered infect and might also kill all universally accepted living organisms like animals, plants, fungi, proteins, bacteria and archaebacteria. Viruses also now have been known to infect other larger viruses too. So that should make the viruses alive, right? But the counter argument to this is even poisonous substances can affect all living beings and might also kill them. Just because of that reason, we don't call poison alive, right? We all mostly know what all are living and what all are not. If some of you hadn't thought why your computer mouse is called a mouse, now you know. And we all know which mouse is alive and which one is not. You can call this thing table chair or maybe you can call chairable which is not alive, but was once alive in the form of tree. While the women in the picture are stopping the trees from being locked. We also know the plastic waste in the ocean is not alive, but the aquatic animals and plants which will die because of it are alive. We definitely know that guns and bullets are not alive. But the wildlife once shot by the poachers sadly will not be alive for long if they are not stopped in time. While we rever the holy book, but torture the holy cow, obviously before we kill it. And what about God? Is God really alive? Don't worry, this is none of your gods. This is the screen God. Unlike other gods, there is no criteria to be his disciple. If you have a screen, this becomes your screen God. His, hers, everyone's screen God. This is most powerful God because you will think and do exactly what you see on your screens. But the main question is, is this God alive or not alive? 
Hey you, hey you, yeah you, yeah you, talking to you, the one holding the phone, the one holding the phone, the one. Don't ever compare me, ever compare my own creation, my own creation, my own. I am the screen god, I am the screen god, I am that line between the my life and the my life. And here we thought we only had this problem with virus. We thought virus was the only line between being alive and dead, which is not so, which we have found out now. So, like above example, somewhere straightforward, where we knew which are alive and which are not, and somewhere confusing, where we didn't know the status of life in them. This one is for you to guess. In this pic, which one is alive and which one is not, whether both are alive. or both are not you can take 5 seconds to answer the answer is the one on your right is the picture of mushrooms which are alive and the pic on your left is of stalactites and stalagmites which are forms of mineralization found usually in limestone caves and thus are obviously not alive So due to the confusing ones the scientists have come up with criteria which draws that line between being alive and dead based on this criteria now we can differentiate most known things into living and non living most not all with good knowledge that just because scientists drew a line for human convenience that nature doesn't give a flying fig about human convenience like how most scientists and thinkers have realized everyone should also realize that nature doesn't give a flying fig about sapiens convenience it just manifests in its own way there will be some things in the nature which will always remain confusing due to the to and fro limbo as we also saw in above articles the status of viruses has got stuck between two groups of microbiologists to everyone's surprise neither of the two groups with opposing views is wrong According to the first group who accept the existing criteria claim that viruses are not living organisms they are just infective agents but according to the second group of microbiologists who counter it by saying that the criteria needs upgradation so that if not prions at least viruses and viroids should be considered as living organisms and are eligible for their own separate kingdom in classification of organisms until few years back the first group was clearly winning the argument hands down but as new research produces new information about probable common ancestry of viruses bacteria and archaea bacteria and similarities between the protein folds between viruses and discovery of large viruses like mimi virus and mega viruses which are larger than many bacteria have more similarities to bacteria than viruses with many but not all components required for self replication a new stalemate in the argument has arrived with that line between being alive and dead has shifted towards alive but all scientists belonging to both group 1 and 2 have agreed to one thing that an organism must meet certain criteria to be considered alive these exact requirements might be worded differently depending on whom you ask but they will generally include using energy growing reproducing and having an evolutionary history scientists claim that these can be explained by cell theory to know cell theory we should first know what is a cell cell constitutes of nucleus endoplasmic reticulum cytoplasm cell membrane dna lysosome ribosome mitochondria golgi apparatus despite capsid in virus is like nucleus in cell covering genetic material dna or rna and instead of cell membrane there is lipid envelope in virus virus doesn't have any structure similar to cell except genetic material that is dna or rna with above knowledge group 1 claims that virus is not alive which can be explained by cell theory cell theory which constitutes three important things one all life is made of cells or a cell two a cell is the smallest unit of life three and cell only can come from other cells like what we saw above as virus doesn't fit in current definition of cell thus virus is not alive that is the claim by group 
along with this other points to define what constitutes a life based on characteristics of cell fourth point a cell can transform energy but virus can't transform energy it can only utilize host store for all energy requirements fifth point a cell can grow but a virus doesn't grow once copies of viruses are made from host cell and its organelles those actual copies are directly released to infect other cells sixth point is a cell can reproduce and undergo division on their own viruses cannot reproduce without any host cell involvement seventh point is a cell has organelles for protein synthesis viruses do not have an organelle for protein synthesis they depend on host cell for this function too eighth point a cell has evolutionary history and virus too has evolutionary history except the eighth point regarding how viruses too have evolutionary history like other cells all other points favor the claim that viruses including corona viruses are not alive thus should we conclude that viruses are not alive let's not jump the gun so quickly before hearing the group 2 microbiologists the factors that are common between viruses and other cells and organisms are one viruses might not fit into definition of cells but have many similar structures they are made up of genetic material with some type of coating normally proteins or membrane taken from host cells two can reproduce by taking other host cell to make copies of itself have you seen a stone reproducing no nobody has seen that but virus reproduces so it is alive three viruses have an evolutionary history meaning they can change over generations why this criteria is not stressed upon is it only because to keep viruses out as non living things fourth point viruses can mutate meaning their rna or dna change as they reproduce within one generation that doesn't happen in any non living thing fifth point many bacteria like viruses until now haven't grown on any kind of culture media and thus have failed to survive and function outside host cell which involves independent energy transformation growth and multiplication so until they are successfully cultured outside host should we consider these bacteria to as non living things like scientists the viewers are also divided in two groups group 1 viewers few of them who had unscientifically believed the rumors that coronavirus is an elaborate hoax and is not alive or few others who had scientifically believed that viruses are not cells and thus not alive but to new evidence presented to you in this video now have shifted to group 2 and accepted that viruses are alive and the second group viewers are those who thought the viruses are almost same as bacteria which infect and cause disease and believed that viruses are alive as any other living beings but with new information at hand that they don't fit into definition of cell thus have shifted from group 2 to group 1 by the end of this video and are sadly calling coronavirus you are dead to me now both the groups should know that status of virus will still remain the same for now because like humans nature doesn't define life in binary either everything is alive or dead in nature life is a spectrum of things with varying complexity and everyone if they have understood the above video and have stayed till the end of the video one clear conclusion we all can definitely draw is all can repeat after me nature doesn't give a flying fig about human convenience it just manifests in its own way if you found the video informative like share and subscribe and comment down on what you want to know more regarding covid-19 in coming videos also if you like the content of the video along with scientific material and few of you are interested in reading more on the topic below are the links to the interesting ones